From across the comic book community multiverse, the Comic Con podcast begins now with your hosts, Justin, aka Nemesis Prime. If you give them the title of influencer, then that's that's giving them more power, right? That's how it is. Like, I'm a nobody. Listen, I'm a nobody. Zach, aka the Manimal. We talked about it for a full, I believe, seven to eight minutes on an hour-long normal podcast of our show. And you would have thought we set their house on fire with the backlash. So, Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Comic-Con Podcast, Season 3, Episode 31, recording this on August the 3rd. You are listening to this on the earliest of August the 4th. Of course, this week, your boy Nemesis Prime hosting the show, but Manimal is gone and... Unfortunately, he didn't make it another week. So I got some people with me this week. I have some people that were at with me at Terrificon. I have one person who was actually my co-bunk mate all the way from Canada. Um, not really sure what else to call him, but uh, you know him as Rocksteady Collectibles. What's going on, Greg? How are you? Not much. I miss you. Oh, I miss you too, bro. <laughs> I, I, the little... I luckily we didn't, you know, touch each other's fingers when we were sleeping. I I do appreciate the sleeping nights now post Terrificon from your snoring, but um I'm I'm glad you're here. Thank you for joining us. I can't wait to talk about Terrificon. So uh and my other cohort of the night who's laughing in the background, uh, you know him as the card ripper king of whatnot, uh comic dunes Jeff himself. What's going on, Jeff? How are you? Hello, everybody. How are you? Um, that, that, that I miss you, it, it just had me. It hits because I miss him all the time. So I'm glad someone else is feeling that real time as as I am. And I'm essentially the Abe Froman of card ripping, guys. So that's the sausage mm. king of Chicago. I'm the card king of New York. So let's just get it right here. When we went live, you actually ripped some uh, some Roger Rabbit cards. Did, you get, did anybody get anything good? You know what? I'm gonna. I didn't rip the Roger Rabbit. I only ripped. I threw in a last minute, last action hero pack. Nothing good. <laughs> we got a second appearance of Jack Slater. That's card number twelve. <laughs> but uh, nothing good. Nothing good. We're still chasing that rookie. Oh my god! I cannot wait for you guys to to see the Comic Dunes. Please follow Comic Dunes on whatnot. When he does card rips with myself, it is the best show. And at Terrificon, and we're gonna get into it. At Terrificon, I bought. A box of what did I buy? Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures. Bill and Ted, yeah. yeah. And then I bought tons yeah, of packs excellent. of um Super Mario Brothers, the movie, the original movie, and uh some San Bob Diego Oscar's Zoo, baby. bro. San Diego Zoo, natural life. Yeah. Greg, real quick, tell tell the people <laughs> when a newbie opened up those cards and was thinking it was gonna be something else. How disappointed so, he was. So we got excited uh but in a different way, and he just kind of got excited because we were excited when we found them. And then uh, he opens up the pack, and he's like, meerkat, giraffe. He's like, what the hell are these? <laughs> what did you expect, man? The meerkat rookie is hot, man. I used yeah. to work at a high-end auction house, and these guys would talk about the one-of-one one meerkat RPA. <laughs> and I had no idea, but now I know, and thank you for that. So, yeah, that's a good pull. I think the best thing about those packs is that there are zero inserts in the entire set. It's just <laughs> it's just one through thirty six, and, and we and then newbie he he was all mad. He's like, I wasted a dollar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's come like, on, no man. Inserts. Like, yeah, it, it was just it's so funny. I mean, you're gonna see it if you follow Comic Dunes, and I posted it on my Instagram, um, the picture of what I picked up. So it's the new thing, man. The new card ripping. It's it's. You know, obviously, and, and speaking man. of whatnot, whatnot is very manipulative right now in the card market. But, you know, of course, here for us comic guys trying to get in the card market, we're, we're true, man. We are, you know, we're not manipulating anything. We're giving to you real. We're giving you real rookie cards. We're not shaking and baking. So um, let's get into the stuff. You so, you know, to that Roger Rabbit, Justin, it's a, it's a Roger Rabbit. Let's just let them know. Just let them know. I, There's Jessica Rabbit fans out there. Yeah, and there's a first appearance, and I think there's a Jessica Rabbit sticker that's more Ooh. sought after than the Michael Jordan sticker. Facts. Yeah, no Facts. gum stains on that. Ooh, bubble gum stains. Oof. Yeah, mm. rough with those stickers. 
Yeah, I saw Newbie did a short, and he pulled some of those uh, Batman Returns cards. It's nice. I mean, the Catwoman's are dope. I told him I was like, oh Catwoman's man, those nice. Catwoman's are fire. Yeah. So yeah, which one, there was there was two sets. I think there was the tops, and then there was another one. Like the ones that we had then. previously. The ones that oh you yeah, and I the tops. Previously. I think those were an, uh, a a stadium. finer card. Yeah. 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 The Batman much. Returns, I think, was the better one in the foil packs, not the wax. Yeah. This is oh, going God. off the rails. Yeah, this is. I've told you that he's going to become. He's going to become newbie card. Wait, real newbie quick. Comics. Oh my God! You're his, you're his card mule. That's it. That's what I love. That's it. We <laughs> got good. we got a we got to reseal his baseball card with like some Desert Storm and then just send it to him and I'll have a yeah. real surprise. Do some Logan Paul stuff. Yeah, yeah, GI Joe packs. Oh, all day. I'm in. I got to well, get him into the cause. Let's uh I got two two people, two guests here in the show. It's different, you know. Zach's not here. I'm leading I'm leading the pack this week. We're gonna switch it up. We're gonna go uh we're gonna talk some articles and then we're gonna get into some community questions and then we're gonna get into terrific con and we'll end the night with, of course, how we always end these shows with what are we currently reading. So let's kind of get right into our articles for the evening. Uh this is you know, it's funny, you know, everything that happened at San Diego Comic Con was no movies, no shows. It was a lot of like comic talk, but a lot of things. There's so much I feel like that went on at Comic Con that was just like under the radar, right? So, you know, a lot of this stuff may be a week or two old. You may not know about it. You may have known about it, but I feel like Skybound and Robert Kirkman is just killing it right now. Obviously, you got the the Transformers universe with Void Rivals. Here's another thing that is going to be picking up under the Skybound Entertainment, and this article is coming over from Skybound.com. So, James Tinney the Fourth and Martin Simmons launch Universal Monsters Dracula comic book series. So, of course, there's no brand new legendary in the horror of Universal Monsters, and there's no horror comics writer working today who's more acclaimed than James Tinian. So horror fans have double cause to rejoice. The Eisner winner will be doing a four-issue miniseries for Universal Monsters Dracula limited series for Skybound with art, of course, from Martin Simmons, of course, from the Department of Truth. So uh, coming out in October... Uh, it's coming out from Skybound. It's going to be four issues, going to give you a little bit more in depth of Dracula. Uh, and what we do know is not only is these four issues going to be about Dracula, but they're already talking about the other monster series. And they haven't really touched on who it is, but I'm sure it'll be like, you know, uh, Frankenstein, the Wolfman. And those are going to be coming out later in the year, if not early next year, from people like Joshua Middleton. Francis Manipold and, and Jenny Frizzone doing some art. So um, anybody horror fan, you know, Greg, what do you think about these? You, are you going to be picking up these, you know, four issue minis for the horror stuff for universal monsters? Uh, universal monsters are fun, but the only problem I see with Dracula is that what do you call it when anybody can use the property? Like just when it's free after a certain amount of years. Uh, like there's no there's no trademark anymore. Yeah, exactly. So it, it's really interesting because Marvel's done Dracula, and, and now we Tops. get this universe. Yeah, exactly. This Universal monster stuff. Um, I'm excited to see a universe built around it, which I think the other comic companies have failed to do. Mm -hmm. um, I look forward to it. I think Tinian is is gold though, right? Um, compared, there's a lot of indie books that come out on a regular basis. And his solidly hit. They're solidly good. Good reviews. Um, I don't think um, you could go wrong with this. I, I'm going to pick it up. I'm just to read it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it. And, and look at the cover artist you named and, and Simmons. And I think it's a nice little package they're putting together there. Yeah, uh, like you said, that without the, with the horror stuff that he's got, the indie stuff. I mean, he, I'm sure he's going to rock it. I know that upcoming movie. What is it? The Last Voyage of the uh, the, the Meter. I'm I'm looking forward to that, um, Jeff. You know, what are your thoughts on some horror stuff from Tinian for Dracula? Yeah, I'm not big into the horror, but um, just like reading that, that got me interested. Uh, I picked up Department of Truth. Mm -hmm. I know he was in on that, and I still have like two more to, to catch up with, but I'm enjoying that so far. I know he did the Batman Ninja Turtles, and I flipped through that uh, when I know I know we uh, saw some of your books in your collection there, but like. Um, yeah, I, I think it's cool. I know they tried some movies recently. They didn't. They recently try to reboot the Universal uh, Monsters universe, and and like one movie just failed. Yeah, that Tom that, Cruise Mummy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and I mean, let's see because they it's cool, right? Like I, monsters are fun. It's different, right? I'm usually used to reading the superhero stuff, so 
like you said, Rocksteady, anything that he touches is gold. And I'd like to see their take on it and revive that brand. And hopefully they can just keep it all like one universe and, you know, start just tacking on different monsters. Hmm. Yeah, I, I'm excited. You know, I'm not, I'm a big, I would say not horror fan, but like monster horror is always cool. So like, I'm excited to see, you know, the Frankenstein series, the Wolfman series. And uh, I mean, I guess like what else would be uh, like um, Merman, right? I guess that's Black Lagoon, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like something like Black that. Lagoon, yeah. yeah, like those are cool. And I think depending on whose art you get is going to be is going to be interesting to see as well. And I think like, obviously, like, I said before, you got, you know, Francis Manipold. He's done some great stuff as far as art and writing. You got Joshua Middleton in there. Um, and then Jenny Frizzone, of course. You know, I'm sure she's just going to be rocking with her art. So first issue drops uh, Wednesday, October 25th, of course, right around for perfect for Halloween. And then look forward to see how, you know, whatever else comes out of uh, image. But I mean, right now, Kirkman is just pushing all this stuff, especially, like I said, with the Void Rival stuff and all these other things. So it's kind of like he's trying to getting all these different properties gi joe stuff so you know we're gonna keep moving through everything as you know as skybound kind of gets bigger and bigger so uh moving on to some tv stuff to talk about we do have the latest trailer of loki season two just dropped that was kind of interesting uh they've they're talking about disney and how it's breaking records which i'm i'm actually shocked to be honest uh how how many views it's gotten over the past whatever 24 48 hours from it dropped you know, I don't know what the anticipation for it. I guess it's, you know, they want to see what's going on because Loki's been gone for so long. And Loki kind of was like almost like the Kickstarter of the Disney Plus universe, right? I mean, I know it was like WandaVision, but the one that really hit it was Loki because you didn't know what to expect. And now you actually have the season two finally coming back. So Sylphie's coming back. You see, obviously, you know, not Kang, but uh, Jonathan Majors is in there. You have what's pretty funny you know right off the rip um the guy from everything and everything and everywhere else uh ki hung q i think that's how you say his name he's looks he looks great i mean it's awesome to see him and some stuff and then all the characters from the first first season so um Ms. your jeff what you know what did you think of loki season two trailer well i was really excited because i loved season one and i feel mm -hmm. like that was one of the strongest disney plus shows start to finish and like you said it kicked off the cosmic like the whole we're breaking everything um look i watched it a couple times contributing to that large number of people who are millions and millions <laughs> right uh but it, like it's i'm excited because it, it there's i feel like they're tying everything together like that glitching and the time slipping and some stuff looks familiar to stuff we've seen and I, you know in in multiverse of madness the way like he kind of like shredded apart and is that their live screen version of the way that they, they glitch in the spider verse and i can go on as we go but i'm really excited to see where they take this uh, i think he's a great actor tom uh, what is it middle middleton Hiddle, hindleton i hit i always Hiddleston. mix it up Hiddleston. yeah and, and uh i'm excited to see what he does as loki and mm. yeah i'm just i i have a, a ton of stuff that i touched on here that i like i'm just curious about but I want to see where Rocksteady goes with this, and then we can jump in on it. Yeah, go ahead, Rocksteady. Thoughts? Yeah, like nine out of ten people I talked to would say Loki season one was the best uh, Marvel yeah. movie or show or pretty much anything that came out in the last while since the beginning of the pandemic, since, like, I guess WandaVision was the first one, right? Mm -hmm. um, I like that they're doing – it has the same feel, and, and it feels very – the continuity is consistent, if that makes sense. Like, don't fix what isn't broken. Um, I, I think Owen Wilson was the star of that show. Uh, I, I'm excited to see more of him. Um, I also think it's the first show for people like us um, since Moon Knight, if that makes sense. Like, because we got Miss Marvel, we got She Hulk, but those weren't top characters on my list to see. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited. It almost feels like there was a, a bit of a wait for this. And, and I feel the comic book fans around our age are going to get a little bit more excited for this one than some of the past stuff. Yeah. You're back to the legacy characters, right? You know, not so yeah, much a legacy yeah. hero of legacy villain, but someone that has been around, been since, around. since phase yeah. one, you know? Yeah. 
Uh, when I, did Thor come out? The right? He's been around the, the yeah, first Thor. 2009, movie. 2010. I mean, it, it's been it's been That's forever. Early. That's a yeah. long time. Yeah. You know, it. I'm I'm a little hesitant on to be honest. Like you know, you touched on it. Like what you saw the whole like time slipping and it, it's kind of feel like it's being used right. It's it was used in the Spider Verse stuff. It's being used a little bit in in Doctor Strange. And I feel like they're everyone's kind of using it and calling it something different, right? I'm a little, I'm a little like, do something different. Like, why, you know, why do this? Like, realistically, like, why? And I'm sure it's going to be explained, like, why is Loki time slipping, right? Right. Because, of course, he took the time stone. But, like, I feel like this has already been done. You know, we've already seen this, right? I just hope my man, uh, Owen, gets his jet ski. That's it. Like, one <laughs> ride, whether it's, like, a quick glory ride or, you know, he just rides off to the sunset or like, yeah, yeah. something. Yeah origin story just, yeah. just tie it up for me because he is daydreaming about that thing bad oh my god bad and, right. and they, they i saw they had like a few new characters i think but one what i was looking at was uh zaniac which i saw that, that was kind of cool and and since we were talking about like the horror stuff i just figured i'd mention that right i, I thought that was weird because he's like a um a demon like a dude who gets possessed by a demon and I, yeah. I, I'm not familiar with the character, but I just thought that was interesting that they were maybe going that route as well. Especially yeah, he's he like got, a movie character, I think, or not like a movie right, character. But, 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 later, but later on, he, mm-hmm. there's a, a serial killer, like he gets possessed by the Zaniac and mm-hmm. he actually turns into a monster in like a later. So I want to see huh. if they do that because we got monsters with, uh, with Werewolf by Night. Yep. So I, I don't know. Just that maybe they might be touching on everything. I think that's pretty interesting. Yeah, it would be it, good to see. It all has to tie together at some point, right? So it's nice to yeah. get yeah. not just hints of one show or movie, but to incorporate the entire universe that they're building. Would that be cool if you got a cosmic thing and then your monsters, right? Because that's just the complete opposite. And if they found like a really cool way to just tie that together real quick, I don't out of, out of nowhere, I feel like we would get excited. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing that in Loki because I feel like Loki is the type of show that that's what it is. Like you can bring in all different aspects. Like it could be obviously multiversal. It could be cosmic. It could be horror. It, you know, and that's where even if they're only in it for one scene, yeah, like you said, it gets us all super excited to see. Something well, that was like the that. wild card, right? In the first mm-hmm. season, right? Like we got all the different variants, and we're like, oh my god, this is so cool. Yeah. Like an alligator Loki. Like <laughs> so, they're gonna they're yeah. gonna keep doing stuff like that, and. and you never know. I mean, this is the show. This is this. I think this is the wild card show that they'll do a little bit of out of the box stuff, like the fan service, and, and really mm-hmm. make us happy. But they'll tie into everything that's going on. I think it'll be really strong too, just with how weak everything has been in, in the past, up to date. But really, yeah. I'm hope. I yeah. I agree with you. I hope so too. I would love to see like kind of just like a random like Loki goes to like werewolf by night and man thing right like just you randomly just see him show up for whatever reason like he's time slipping and he time slips to like that that area of um the world so yeah we'll see we'll see what happens for uh for loki season two i you know i know it's it's weird because right now like there's nothing on disney plus you know we have a couple more weeks for ahsoka and then ahsoka ends and then that actually starts up so that'll be uh interesting for for us disney plus fans and not you know obviously with the the writer strike and actor strike everything's kind of getting pushed back but at least we have something to look forward to because again what's the next marvel movie i mean we have nothing for a while if i'm not mistaken, the marvels everything. and yeah, that's yeah, oh marvels. that's like december but i heard that may even slip um and then you have echo at the end of the year as well so i guess you know we'll, we'll have to see how these things go but again october is you know right around the corner for if you look at it and uh, we'll be looking at season two for Loki soon enough. So um, let's get out of our TV and movie talk. Cause again, there's not much really going on. Let's kind of get into some community questions. So I've actually, it's really interesting. I decided to start doing this on um, the comic-con podcast, Instagram. So every Thursday, I'm just going to start dropping um, something. You can kind of ask us questions and, you know, obviously we're not going to get to everybody's, but we'll get to some of them that seem extremely, uh, extremely interesting. So, um i have two of them here actually i have three of them here two of them are are pretty funny so we'll go with some funny ones and then we'll kind of get into the serious ones. so uh the first one comes from uh, our boy black crown comics he said um this is obviously asking me he goes how great did it feel to scoop those digimon number one's dynamic forces from under newbie's nose um it was pretty epic 
I will say that I, I saw the prices online. I saw what they what I got them for. So that is uh, I'm happy about that black crown. Thank you so much for that. Question. That bothered newbie all weekend. Did he talk about it when I wasn't there? On the way home. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> I don't I'm know sure if he mentioned it on the way good. home, but man, it was it was in his head. You were in his head for sure. Awesome. I, I like that. That's always good. Um, and then just another question uh, from Black Crown. Who was the worst to bunk with and why? Is it Greg? Uh, <laughs> it's actually a toss. It was actually a toss up at Terrificon. It was uh, between. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, yeah. hold on. I'm sorry. I just got a random text saying these guys snore so loud or something <laughs> to that effect. So I'm going to say that they're, they're all equally terrible to bunk with. <laughs> I can't, uh, like, I, I can't deny it, but uh, I never heard myself snoring. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah, I didn't hear myself either, and I asked you guys, so not at all. Uh, Pretty nice. You got to bring those <laughs> earplugs, man, on the road. Oh, that's, I, that's what I got to do next year, Jesus. Um, so that's, uh, I appreciate that black crown, but let's kind of get into a serious question. And again, I appreciate the questions. A lot of questions did come in. I just want to get to at least one of them this week, but this is kind of what we're going to do an ongoing basis. Cause we haven't gotten any questions or articles or, you know, voicemails over at the comic con podcast at gmail.com, which, you know, you could always send, but, uh, this one's coming from our buddy, Mike, the beast Benson. You've heard him here on the podcast. You've seen him all over the East coast, three men in the basement comic swap. He was also at terrific con. He asked, Hey guys, hope all is well. What are your guys? all-time favorite comic book story arcs and i know we touched on this a while ago about talk about story arcs but you know since the question's up here and uh, you know i know zach's not here but i got two other people that i'm sure people don't know their reading habits and what some of their uh, favorite things are so we're just gonna go around the horn so uh let's start with uh mr comic dunes jeff so what is your favorite comic book story arcs just uh, you know one yeah, or two all, or all three, time four, five. jump in from my first one i mean i guess is uh the cap brew baker run winter soldier like at a time mm. winter soldier he's my go-to guy my favorite and he was uh reinvented in this series right and yeah. they really they brought bucky bucky back which was pretty wild like out of nowhere he went from being like a, a young teen robin kind of like sidekick who died in the war to you know uh they kind of aged them up a little bit and he became like a wise cracking type uh uh you know w- he would do all the dirty shit that Cap wouldn't do, and that was kind of mm. cool. Um, and then just to see how they reinvented Cap, they modernized him, and him suffering through all like the crap that they went through, it, it was cool. Um, that's my all-time favorite run. I think Brew Baker is amazing, and if I could kiss his face, I would, because Cap's my guy, and he put him back on the map for that. Yeah, I agree with you. Like Cap was just. So weird. Like I, I read Cap in the '90s, and it was like, all right, you know. And there was some cool like story arcs, a little bit here and there, but for the most part, unless it was like an event for Marvel, his book never really did well, right? Yeah, they and were just have, cheesy. Like, it was like yeah. cheesy, cheesy adventures, you know. And that was it. it. Was like Blood, Bloodstone, right? And it was like, uh, I'm yeah. sorry, was it? Yeah, but yeah. And it's like Crossbones. That was cool. And then it's just like meh. And you had the Liefeld stuff, and oof, boy. that that chest was off. The giant, the but, giant pectorals I mean, from Cap, but yeah, uh, but yeah, I think when Brew Baker changed it up, you know, just the whole series because Bucky was probably it, it was probably the longest dead character, right? In Marvel, yeah, yeah, I think it was, yeah, yeah, without I, I mean, yeah, because they never they never mess with him. Like Stan retconned the whole thing, right? And then they didn't mess with him for like since the sixties, right? Yeah, like, I was gonna mm-hmm. say like sixty years or fifty years or something. Like yeah, that. it's a long time and. And but then it just updated the whole status quo, and then you get this like badass villain who changed the event. It was just like a killing yeah. machine, you mm-hmm. know. And it and it's your best friend. I don't know. It, it, it was just a cool arc. That's gonna be my go to number one all the time. Awesome. Anything else that you, that stands out that you've read? Uh, I mean, the Wolverine, the one to four, right? Um, that that as a kid was like one of the first things that my my cousin kind of like flip through so it just holds a special introduction of wolvie and then kind of falling off and then being reintroduced to wolverine in like the the 90s through the cartoons like going back i thought i like that better than the um like the wolverine series him as patch but uh the frank miller stuff that was fun um and i like the dark knight since we're going frank miller like that gritty Mm. batman Um, i'd recommend that um because growing up Batman to me was kind of corny, but I love Batman. Um, 
and that was like yeah. my cousin's like you got to read this and then uh yeah i think the first the first ninja turtle series too so nice. got introduced to that yes, at a young I'm... age and it was completely different violent uh <laughs> more gritty black and white you know the way that i guess they were originally supposed to be intended not the campy stuff we got as a kid so yeah that eastman laird stuff is, is completely different than like the archie yeah cartoon saturday morning cartoon stuff so Nice, nice. Yeah, I, I, I like uh, I like your pick. What about you, Greg? Uh, you know, question from from Mike. You know, what's your all time favorite comic book story arcs? You know, what do you got? So Jeff, good choice with turtles. That's that's big up there with me. Um, oh, I love it. So the first series or arc, I guess that that got me right back in or got me into comics, kind of in the first place, was the Maximum Carnage stuff, and it kind of mm. bounced over different titles. Uh, but that's more of a nostalgia thing, not a quality of writing thing. I just think as a child that really jumped out at you. Um, the Thanos run, the cosmic ghost rider, the Kate's run that, that for me is, is a bang and run. Uh, Thanos hadn't been at the forefront for a very long time at that point. And he brought him back to life and he became like the biggest villain probably in the Marvel universe. Uh, maybe next to Magneto, right? So mm -hmm. um, I think he really did him justice in that. Um, and then, like, modern indie stuff, Canto for me, um, the first run of Canto, the, the rest of is kind of more of the same, not, not different enough and, and kind of predictable, but the first run of Canto for me really stood out. Um, Noctera is actually one of my favorite runs. Um, but, yeah, I kind of blew through a lot there, but... That I have a lot to talk about as far as favorites go. Yeah, it's so funny, like the Thanos stuff. Like nobody remembers that Jeff Lemire started that series, right? The first like yeah. twelve issues, like it's Jeff Lemire writing. Like he's a great writer, Canadian. <laughs> yeah, it was mm -hmm. fucking great. And then like all of a sudden, it's like it all changed once Cosmic Ghost Rider came. Like once it was like Kate's run for like the last whatever five or six issues, it was like a completely different series. But like it's still like. That that full run is, is very well done from both yeah. of them. I just think it gets I think Lemaire's side is just shadowed from uh from Kate's first appearance. That's that's really what that is. So but uh yeah, I agree with you. I think uh Maximum Carnage is always nostalgic. The fact that it's crossed over into many things is always great. Uh, and people always go back to it. It's not it's something that never really goes down in value. It's something that people have always wanted. Video always game. Spells well, yeah. Yeah, that it's, it's always something that, too, man. Trying to put trying to put that run together, like it's always fun to like when people come up to like a show and they're like, Oh, do you have like this random issue of like, you know, web of Spider Man? Because obviously, oh, you're trying to put together this run. Of course, you're trying to put together maximum carnage. Um for myself, I it's so tough, right? All time favorite arcs. Uh, I, I mean, I gotta go nostalgia realistically. Like it, it's really nightfall for me. You know, I grew up in the eighties, late eighties, and I started collecting comics around that time, and my first big event was nightfall you know the breaking of batman's back you know that 18 issue you know series basically crossing over between detective and batman and legends just the whole idea that bane as a character because this is like after his first appearance you know right after his first appearance he's basically torturing batman and going through you know at a time where batman no longer has a robin he's at this point in the series it's like he's jason's dead um, he doesn't, ha he hasn't had a Robin for a while. Yeah. Like Tim was there, but he really doesn't like it. So that's why he kind of pushed him away. And just the whole idea that, um, Bane is like just running the gauntlet for, uh, for all his villains, like going through like every issue is a different villain and he's just tiring Batman out after every issue until the finally point that we actually gets him <laughs> and gets the ability to break his back. And then of he course, then shows he up. He's yeah. just at his house. He's like, hey, yeah. what's up? <laughs> like, that's the craziest part. He just gets there. He's like, he's like, oh, you were here? Oh, let's get this on. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. It's just so wild. And I, you know, I mean, Casada, like, you know, created, you know, Azrael, and everyone's like, oh, who's this Gene Paul Valley guy, right? Like, it's, it was weird to have someone take the mantle of Batman that wasn't a Batman, you know, f Batman family member, right? Like, it took how many years? And once, uh, what was it final crisis when like dick became batman for a while right like the the normal progression of the batman story lore at that time would have been dick you know he was nightwing so why can't he be batman right like why did it fall to gene paul valley and 
I mean, I'll always go back into that 90s, like that Batman suit that he had, that metal Batman armor was just the coolest thing in the world. Like that, that action just... figure that came with that dude. Oh my god. You get the blue yeah. one and the red one. That was just really bad. Like that was so dope. Yeah. So so fire. And it's crazy to think that that's the type of storyline that then it ends and then it goes right into Night Quest. You have Night Quest the Crusade on one side and you have Night Quest the Search on the other side. And then it goes into another series called Night's End where Batman is now back or you know trying to get back to fight Azrael. Like that was like a two year thing. Like that was like a no joke. Like that's why like there's no story arcs in these, you know, nowadays that are like that, right? Like the fact that Batman ran all through the Nightfall series into the into the crusade and the quest and search and then ends in night ends. Like who has the time for that anymore, right? Like we don't see those types of arcs anymore, these long drawn out like two year process. I mean we do because Sometimes these people can't create 10 issues in, in a year's time. So, yeah, it's drawn out with certain story arcs. But, yeah, um, Mike, I'm going to tell you, I definitely Night's, Nightfall is probably my all-time favorite series. And I've, I I love the whole Batman the whole Batman lore for that. So um, I could go on and on about this whole series. And there's other ones that I wanted to pick. But, I, I mean, I'm a Batman fan uh, first and foremost. So it had to be Nightfall for without a doubt. And, you know. The death of Superman's up there too, because that's another thing. I grew up in the nineties. I'm sure yeah, all at us. the same time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they, and um, I talked about it last week for that DC superpower documentary. They, they talk about those two things. They, you know, they talked about how, you know, how to change up Superman. They were like, let's kill him. And Jerry Conway like always would say, Oh, let's kill him. Let's just kill him because he was terrible. And you know, the comics <laughs> were terrible for him. And then finally they're like, all right, Jerry or Jerry Ordway, not Jerry Ordway is like, all right, fine. What, how do you want to do it? Came up with Doomsday, and that's how it was. And then they were like, "All right, well, what can we do to like spice up other DC stuff?" And then they were like, "Oh, we well, got Shaq in a metal suit. <laughs> best, best, best idea in the world." And that's Meteor what, Man. Oh, yeah. God. And that's what we'll bring to the table is is Shaquille O'Neal. It's right. So, oh God. But uh, appreciate the uh, appreciate the questions, guys. Again, that's what uh, that's what we're gonna do weekly before we record. I'm gonna go ahead up and throw. Um, some cool questions into our, uh, our Instagram stories. So you could just go ahead and drop them in there, but um, let's kind of keep it moving. Of course, we, we, all three of us, we have returned from terrific Han. Um, someone in like Greg, who is came down from Canada first time there um, at the casino. I got the bunk with him, you know, all four day, all three days, four days that we were there or whatever. And it's completely different. You know um, I've been on, you know, YouTube with Greg before Greg's been on here before it's, it's one thing when you're talking to each other, like through Streamyard. that's obviously how we record, but like when you're in person, it's so much different. It's such much, you know, it's an easier, genuine conversation. I mean, we were at one point on Friday, we were hanging out in the room. It was you, me, newbie and Wesley. And I really wish we would just set it up like just a camera. And I just hit record on my phone and just the conversations we're having, like in the afternoon, just drinking, like those are the cool conversations, hanging out in the community and just like, the randomness that we talked about, right? Just fun stuff. But um, for you, man, like you were there the first time, like what was your initial thought? Like, I know I had this conversation with Zach last year when he first went there and it was like, you know, you know, eye opening for him and you've been to shows, you've done shows. So uh, terrific con 2023 rock steady. It was a blast. It was everything. Everybody said it was, if that makes sense. Everybody's mm -hmm. like, Oh, you got to come down and, and it's interesting that it's not talked about in, uh, in the same breath as like SDCC and NYCC, but that's just guests. Like if you want to buy comics and you want to talk comics and you want to hang out with space and, and it wasn't space because it wasn't busy. It's just the way they designed it and set it up. It, it was a very comfortable experience. Mm -hmm. um, but right from the get go, the facilities, I didn't expect um, it was basically uh like one of the casinos in in vegas where you have the shopping you have the nightlife the restaurants um you name it right and, and it was everything you needed was there like you didn't have to go outside for three days if you didn't want to the con was just at the bottom of the elevator and seeing celebrities walk around and and just chatting with people like people had the time it didn't feel like a rush like some of these other shows. And uh, yeah, I, I'm, 
I'm very grateful I went and I'll certainly be back. It was a lot of fun. Mm. Uh, so, uh, you know, obviously not a visual show, but I know you picked up some stuff, but what was your, you know, what was your big pickups? So I, I went with the mindset of, oh, I want to grab some of these books. But then I started seeing things I'll never have the opportunity to grab again. Uh-huh. And, and being in, in the Northeast, I feel like a lot of artists are from that area and a lot of original art kind of pops up. So I ended up buying um, three Biker Mice from Mars pages uh, from, from the original run. So number right. two and number three. And one of the pages is actually the origin of the Biker Mice from Mars. Uh, so I think that's kind of <laughs> that's cool. Co- cool to have in my collection. Um, I got a, an Art Adams signature. I got um, I met the the creator of of the Simpsons comic books, and he did a sketch for me. It was uh, just a lot of cool stuff. Like I wish I could have bought more, but you know mm-hmm. I had to to already get a, an extra carry on for my way back because <laughs> last day. We ended up getting like a short box each on top of what we already grabbed. So, yeah, um, yeah, it was hard not to buy. It was hard to constrain myself. It wasn't hard to spend money because mm-hmm. sellers were motivated to sell. Yeah, and like comparing it to like a show that you know, like in Edmonton and, and other places around by you and stuff like that. Like, do you see that? Like, let's just say like the biggest show that's in your area. You know, do you see that type of thing, or is it just like? comics and funko pops like you know i and obviously yeah maybe you get some oa and you get some artists but like you know even like the guy you didn't didn't you pick up like a prototype toy or something right yeah i picked from uh kenner like the mask like the jim carrey not mask the Mm -hmm. the other one um uh, yeah a prototype action figure so it's uh called a test shot Mm -hmm. so when they're doing their quality control um they just pump uh, the molds full of plastic, whatever's in the lines, just to make sure it's working right. So they come out all sorts of weird colors, and there might be five or six of them out there or something like that, but uh, it was pretty rad. And then I went to the next booth over, and they had the production figure. So it makes it a nice little display for me. That's cool. So, like, would you see stuff like that at shows by you, or no? Like, Not... Okay, so the big one by me is Fan Expo. Um, in Edmonton, and then I've gone to the Toronto Fan Expo the last couple of years with Newbie, mm-hmm. and that is very mystery box, swords. Um, these guys just travel from convention to convention to convention, and mm-hmm. they found the sweet spot because it's a pop culture event. It's not a comic book yeah. event, so you get all different walks of life. So yeah. I bet you only 30% of the people going are comic book collectors. The rest want to meet the celebrities. The rest want to buy the t-shirt. And, and they figured out the formula, what sells best to those fringe people who, quite frankly, don't know any better with those mystery boxes and, and things like that. So yeah. Terrificon, I would say, was 80 85% comics. Like, it, there was none of that garb. Like there were a few people trying to put ice packs on you and, and, and stuff like that every time you walk by, but you also got to pay the bills. Right. So, yeah. um, I get it. And, and it was, yeah, it was very different than like, we do have a local one. Um, let's put on the, the Edmonton collector con, um, by my buddy Shane. And, and it's a great one for comic books as well, but it's kind of half comics, half toys. But it's it's probably one of the better ones in Western Canada if you're going to shop for comics. But the big ones, the big shows, yeah, nothing like that one. That's awesome. Yeah. So I mean, you know, your your first time, you got to see everything. You know, obviously, you came down with newbie and Wesley. You know, obviously, you said you're going to come back next year. You know, we we are already planning it for next year. They they actually pushed it back. So for the people that are listening and don't know yet, um, it's no longer in July for next year. It's going to be in like the third week of August because San Diego Comic Con is actually pushing back their show a week. So you know, I think it's August sixteenth through the eighteenth of uh, next year. Same thing in Mohegan Sun. Um, I think tables go on sale in December. You know, Zach and I have already discussed that. We're really considering you know doing a table next year just for you know maybe half selling purposes, half promoting the podcast. I think it'd be a lot of fun. You know, we've always talked about trying to do something and, you know, Zach is going to be on the East Coast soon. So, um, you know, we got a year away. But, uh, you know, from 
from one person from all the way from Canada as a collector. And now we have, you know, Jeff, you were there, you know, you were there kind of more so as like a vendor, you know, what do you think about it compared to other shows? You know, what were you there up there to grab and, and to sell and buy? Well, th this time it was different for me because I usually set up on the other side. So like all year for me, um, kind of just working for myself. I've only been to a few conventions. I've been taking it easy, but this was a show I needed to hit for two reasons. One, I got an um, original piece of art from Chris Campagna. Uh, it was Ghost Rider 16, page 10. It was like the first time all three Ghost Riders are on the same page, which mm. I thought was just cool. And That's I get a lot of art from Chris. So cool. And I, it, <clears throat> excuse me. And, and I'm just, I'm kind of transitioning from comic collecting into like original art. Um, and my, my habits are all over the place. But it was interesting to be on the other side because I didn't realize how many comic book vendors were there this year. Maybe it was just different because you're usually set up so you're overwhelmed. like or, or just like running, you know, the whole time, the whole show, talking to people and not like searching the floor mm -hmm. with no agenda, no schedule, right? No, no, uh, you, have to, you have to hit this many consignments and come back to the booth or, mm -hmm. you know. So it, it was different. To be able to come and go and uh we we stayed like you know pretty close so we were just buy a few books or you know we filled like some small runs I, I was looking for like random back issues of like blade from the 90s um or right that volume two crap that's like all shiny and stuff just because i've never read that and i, I had it here in a collection um, yeah yeah so like hunting random stuff and then just talking to the vendors that i've known that i haven't seen in a while because i haven't been going to shows who I, you know, I've been a dealer for the better part of 10 plus years. So it's always nice when like, you, you don't see somebody, but that that's my road family. They know my children, they know my wife. So mm -hmm. it's uh, cool to catch up and then have a drink with those guys. And, and like you said, just be in the community um, with a show that's busy for them, but not as, as busy for everybody like Comic-Con where it's, <clears throat> excuse me, super hectic and overwhelming. And it's, it's four days of nonstop, right? There's, yeah. there's not that much full, like real, real enjoyment during Comic-Con week. As oh, yeah. Setup. So like Terrific Con is different, right? Yeah. Like because they're they're working the show. But once the show floor ends, yeah, you're, they're going to go you're enjoy going themselves. To the yeah, you're, you're going to go 30 feet. It's, it's a casino. Yeah, right? they're going to hang out. Like they're not. Yeah. It's not like New York where like they're already thinking about tomorrow, like thinking of how right. many people are right. walking through the doors. Like they're the, literally the, just going to end their end the show, restock or just make sure everything is good and then like get prepped for the, the next day. And then the next day after it's that, horrible. but at least like New York Con is... Con is the worst. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's I'm going to give you guys into uh, just, I've set up and done five, six New York comic cons, right? One by myself is comic dunes. It was Howie, myself and a friend. That was, that was fun. Cause it was a small 10 by 10, but working for other people, I was an operations manager setting up metropolis was easy. It was just standard. We come with the million dollar books. We put them down, and everybody just comes and stares. We're like, oh my god, yeah, you got pictures. this. Yeah. yeah, they're like, it's it's your the eight hundred pound gorilla in the room with, you know, glitter on, and everybody just comes and stares at you. <laughs> and there's like really three people who could buy a book, and, and it's just there for show. And we can do this. I was the operation manager for Absolute Comics and Statues, Alex Needleman, and you can ask Howie. I'm just like rubbing my face. The the last time. I worked for him. We did a show. He decided to have an extra booth that was like 10 by 20. It was like $150 books. The freaking elevator breaks. And we had to set up and break down. So like the setup there and then the breakdown. We we worked like uh, maybe 20 hours straight that Sunday. It was the absolute worst. So I, it's just a different feel, right? Being on mm -hmm. the other side. And my first show where I'm just like my first real big bigger show because i didn't go to san diego like i'm gonna be set up this year at new york comic-con again yay shameless plug comic dunes go find us but um like it, it, it was nice just to be able to hang out and talk to people you know and catch up and like you said the interesting conversations about what's going on in the community um mm -hmm. uh, being disconnected and playing in a different level right or different pool so to speak yeah. for a while so you go to like New York, up. right? Like, cause you go to New York, if you went to San Diego or like any other type, typically any other type of con, you go to the show and it's at some convention center. And then if you're staying somewhere, like everybody's staying at different places, they're all staying at different hotels. Nobody's yeah. like close by. It's always like, you're like walking or got to get in the cab or Uber or whatever else. But with this, it's like, everybody's in the same location. You're just like, 
hey, what floor? What you know? What what's your room number? And then everybody just kind of hangs out. Like if you're all in the same tower, people just come and go. Like you know, people came into our room. Yeah, like we all yeah. just hang out. Like there's no there's no like agenda. There's no like, Hey, well, I guess I'll see you in like 45 minutes or an hour because I got to get to you and there's traffic. No, it's like terrific. And it's like, Hey, uh, I'm going to come downstairs, meet me at the bottom of the escalator or meet me at here. And it's like, it's just such an easy thing. And like you said, like just having all like the different community members they are just all over the place. So it's just wild. Like, and I think that's the greatest thing about terrific on, you know, for myself, you know, I went there, <laughs> I went there with nothing. And I, I said it on my Instagram post. I, I left, I went there with nothing. I came home with like six or seven slabs, four short boxes of books. You know, um, I did well. I did some, did some winnings at the casino floor. Um, that was Greg exciting. Knows, Greg knows all <laughs> about that. Did some, some power hands on roulette. Um, thanks to some guy named newbie comics. Um, so that was pretty interesting and, and fun. And, uh, you know, I got to, uh, was able to spend some, some extra money and, you know, I came home and, uh, ended up buying some original art. Some, some Star Wars OA, so and that's always fun to do. So um, it, was a, it was a good weekend, all in all, and and it was almost like hanging out in your your high school's hallways, right? You you don't re- you just bump into people and end up hanging out. Yeah, with them. yeah, it is exactly the feel. And to everybody's credit, like it felt like an old group of friends getting together. Like um, it, it felt like I knew everybody for a really long time. Mm-hmm. And you just continue on where you were. And and I think that's the beauty of the community is everybody was there. And there are some people who, who are pretty big in the comic space. And, and they were just regular people. And I love that. Yeah. Nobody gives you the cold shoulder or the evil eye. Like, everyone's very welcoming. Like, it doesn't matter. You know, and, you well, know, I had people. L word. Oh, legends. I mean, yeah, have those legends out there. Yeah. But it's it's great, you know. Like, I, you know, I appreciate anybody that came up to me and said that they listened to the podcast that I didn't know you, you know. Like, and you know, for the most part, it's always, you know, we always, I'm always at shows and I see people that I always know, and they're always like, "Hey, man, that was a great episode like two weeks ago," or "Hey, I'm catching up and I just listened to that." And it's, if it's people I know, like I always appreciate our, our our normal listeners that I know personally. But if it's people that I don't know at all, and that's why I try to get out to shows and. That's awesome. And I, and I, you know, even all the new listeners, you know, I, I know that uh, I appreciate, you know, we had uh, uh, Artlene from NRG Comics. She was on here, you know, like two weeks ago. And, you know, I got to put some flyers on their table. And of course, the three men in the basement, you know, they, they do set their little setup there for their YouTube channel. The same thing. Like, I feel like that's what I want to do. I just want to kind of hang out with people, kind of have like a nice spot to come, like especially at Terrific Con. Like it doesn't even have to be to sell, just kind of hang out. So um again i appreciate everybody you know and i told zach like i'm just like dude i'm like all these people were you know so cool and so open even people that you didn't meet and everybody that's been here on this channel like obviously you know, you know mickey came all the way from california you know um you know newbie wesley you know joey does comics there's so many people ozzy people that you've heard on this podcast that came out to terrific Con for the first or even second time and just had a blast like there's no agendas it's all just a lot of fun. And I absolutely love that they it's getting bigger and bigger every year. And this year was just wild. Like the line out the door was insane, but it didn't feel like that. Right. Like they moved it quick. Line. They handled it. Yeah. Well. Yeah. But it, that line just it, it let people in, but it, it moved was, really nice. Really well. Yeah. It was crazy. So, um, terrific on 2024, you know, already, already looking forward to it. You know, uh, a nice 12 months left. going to start saving now. Um, you know, I'm going to get, I'm going to get a suite next year. I swear. That's the, that's the plan. <laughs> so, um, you'll see myself I mean, there. How many does a suite fit? Um, I mean, you could do the suite that has like the big bed and then it's got like the pull out couch. So, and then you get people that could just, you know, do I, got, I got an there. inflatable mattress. Yeah, Dude, I know cool. that's what it is. I, it's all that matter. I mean, hell we had four people in a two, what do we had two Queens? Like yeah. I had another one. I know. We uh, managed. Yeah. I know. The more the merrier. It? Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll blow it up in the middle. Bridge the gap. Yeah, yeah, just <laughs> one giant bed. Could have slept in the could have slept in the tub. I didn't care. Someone. <laughs> you would have preferred if I slept in the tub. <laughs> oh, door would have been closed. Would have been perfect. <laughs> Actually, I should have thrown myself into the uh, the closet. That would have been even better. <laughs> we'll just <laughs> take over the lobby of our floor too. But the WNBA <laughs> might complain. Oh God, yeah. So that was another thing. We had, the WNBA was there. They had a game. So. 
saw some of oh, those ladies cool. walking around. We saw a lot of celebrities, you know, um, Sean Gunn saw him, Jerry Connolly, he was married to Rebecca Romaine. Like she was there, of course, the gorgeous girl from Shazam. God, I can't think of her Yo, name. Harry. Oof. Yeah, there's some a lot of lot of hotties out there. So And um, don't forget the two big musical celebrities that we saw. Oh, uh, that's right. We didn't get to talk about that. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. um let's <laughs> This yeah, is the story. This is the story. So it sucks Zach's not here because, you know, I didn't, I don't think I told him. So uh, this, and then we'll, we're going to end this and then we'll, we'll go on to our, what are we currently reading? So Thursday night, we all go out to dinner. It's myself, uh, Greg here, newbie comics and Wesley's comics. We go to Tao. It's a Asian fusion place. We're sitting there. We're having a great time. And then all of a sudden these two guys are taking these selfies by like the, the Shiva statue that's in there. And if you know, like what Shiva looks like big giant goddess with all these arms, and then all of a sudden, like I'm like, I look at these guys. I'm like, I know this guy. And it's like, that looks like Sully from Godsmack. And uh, so we're like, all right, whatever. You know, I'm like, that's cool. Like, maybe we'll see them outside. And then we leave, right? And they're kind of outside. And then we're like, all right, let's do this. Let's follow them. And we all kind of walk outside. And Greg's like, I got to go go for a smoke anyway. I was like, all right, we're going to follow Greg. And we're like, hoping that maybe him and Sully go to the same side. They don't. We're standing outside. I was like, all right, he's on the phone. I don't want to bother him. We go back inside. We're sitting there in the in the uh, the valet area, like waiting for him to come back in. He walks back in. He's still on the phone. Greg over here is like two shits to the wind, and uh, <laughs> you know. Okay, I have a side to this story too, but go I, on. I don't. I didn't really want Greg to like go up to the guy. So I'm like, Greg, get out of here, get away from me. And I was like, I, really want, I don't want you to be by me when I, if I have to do anything fun. And then of course he walked back inside the main lobby. And me and Wesley are still standing in the valet area. And we're like, oh, well, we looks like we missed our opportunity to talk to Sully. And now at this point, Greg and Newbie are inside. And at that point, I don't know what went on. So, Greg, you could take over your side of the story from there. <laughs> so first off, you're making it out like you're playing it really cool. But you're like, oh, my God, is that him? Is that him? And it was like fans before a Taylor Swift concert. <laughs> So <laughs> bigger, so, bigger than like comic book writers and artists. <laughs> like yes. when we see them, I'm just like, Hey, how's it going? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we definitely followed them. And then justifiably, <laughs> um, you asked me to leave and, and that was very fair. I, I didn't want to crush your dreams and, and I don't think newbie cared. So he joined me or he was babysitting me because he was worried about me at that point. I'm not too sure. But, uh, the other thing you didn't mention is when we left the restaurant, you were like, is that Sully? And you were going back and forth with Wes. And then Newbie just yells out, Sully! Sully! To see okay. if he looks. But everybody looked at us. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we were at that point. And then you guys were sitting outside. And then he came in. Because you didn't want to bother him because he was on his phone. Yeah. And then he started coming in. And Newbie's like, I don't care. I'm just going to go up to him. And then he's like, hey, how's it? And he didn't even get three words. And he's like, I'm on the phone. And he walked away angrily and ruined all your chances of getting a photo. And I had the giggles at that point already because I could see the future happening. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it was pretty awesome. And people say that Canadians are nice and genuine. Not that Blame way. Canada. Damn Blame you, man. Canada. So yeah, so that was my story. Absolutely crazy, terrible. I'm very upset that uh, I didn't get a chance to have a sit down talk with Sully and you know, you know, talk about songs and lyrics and everything like that and try to get free tickets. So, but it's really cool. I mean, the fact that he was up there was really awesome. So, it is what it is. But uh, that was our terrific on talk. So if you are enjoying it and thinking about going next year, I highly recommend it um, for a first timer, Greg. You know, like you said, and everybody said after the first time, it's an absolute amazing show to go to. Jeff, you've been going every year now, so I know, you know, you'd recommend it as well. So, Absolutely. Terrific Con 2024, August 16th to the 18th. But let's kind of uh, wrap up our show with what are we currently reading? We always talk about comic books, and of course, this is a comic book show. Um, so let's kind of go around the horn with what are we currently reading, Greg? What are uh, you currently reading? Anything new that came out this week that you really liked or anything that's existing that's uh, something that you get? Uh, I'm really only out? reading two titles right now. So I am continue with Mile. So that's kind of been a mainstay over the last three years. Mm -hmm. um, it hasn't been fantastic, but it's like once you have invested so much in it, you don't want to miss. So <laughs> I just kind of keep going with it. And it's super casual reading. 
Mm. Um, I'm pretty excited Battle Chasers is back um, because that felt really unfinished. And I'm glad that's still going on. And then Edge of Venomverse uh, is a fun read. It's light. Um, and, and I've been grabbing those up. But uh, again, nothing has me real tight right now that I'm reading. Mm. Okay. Cool, cool. Uh, Mystery of the Comic Dunes, what about you? Anything exciting once that you're I heard, reading? Yeah, once I heard there was a new G.I. Joe thing, I jumped on that Void Rivals. Um, I have, I, I read the one. Doesn't really tell me much about my boys, but we get some Transformers at the end. Spoiler alert for those. I'm sorry, it's been out for a while. I should have warned you. But uh, I have to catch uh, the, the next two issues, I think, from my uh, my LCS. Shout out to JHU, New York Lane, Dr. Gore. And then uh, all things Captain America. I have mm-hmm. a backlog of Captain America stuff. They just started playing with my boy and trying to tell me that shield's not really what it means. So uh, I think they're setting them up. And I still have like ten issues to read, and then that coincides, I think, with the Winter Soldier series. I'm sorry, with the um, with the Falcon, Sam Wilson, and mm-hmm. then it had like a Winter Soldier one shot. So I have everything. I've just been backed up with grading, selling, working, and my children. Mm-hmm. So I try to sneak away and read a book here or there. Okay. Well, um, there is a there is a secret invasion event that happens um, at some point. I don't know if you ever get to that. Point. <laughs> never heard of that never heard of it oh okay all right so i don't want to ruin Secret anything for you then if you're if you're all the way back there in, in cap's world so um, no no that was the, that was that was this run that's the lad that's the I current know. ongoing yeah i yeah. just it's it's tough it's tough it's fine it's un, it's understandable you're you're a collector I, it's it's tough to read everything i, I get no, it. no, it's 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 tough to read anything with two young children that's that's all is. i'm saying they're just gonna so, rip your comics apart, right? If you try to well, I have to go hide. I need I need to go hide somewhere if I need to read a comic book mm. and like read why are you taking so long book. in the bathroom? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and then that might not be a nine eight anymore. So uh, it's uh you, you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful when you're reading these books. These kids are intense, they're they're violent. When Miles was young, he uh he's he's ripped up a few dollar books, but now he knows. I mean, at least he pretends he knows it for so. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, for myself, or what are we currently reading? Um, kind of go with some honorable mentions before I get into some hot garbage and pick of the week. So honorable mentions. The Night Terrors has been actually very interesting to read for DC right now. I, I really like the, the main title, The Night Terrors. You know, I feel like I talk about it, but I definitely think it's a really awesome little story that they got going, especially with Dead Man. You know, kind of being the main character in this because he's someone who really doesn't have like a main storyline. He was in the Justice League Dark, so you see him a little bit, but his storyline is pretty awesome. Uh, we're finally getting into like the issue twos of these um, mini series. So, like Batman, the Night Terror is number two, just came out. That was really, that was probably the, I would say, the best so far. The other ones are kind of like hit or miss. Like Poison Ivy was okay. The Ravager was good. Some of them are just like flat out awful that I just, don't understand how who was writing them you know obviously i get why you get like a big writer on like the batman ones because he's like a main character but um the night terror is again is still probably one of the coolest things that they've done in a while for dc um for hot garbage and this is going to be an interesting topic and some people may hate me and i'm, I'm going to get a lot of hate from both of these people but hot garbage of the week is tmnt's last ronin lost days number five like i hate this series <laughs> And the reason why, like, I feel like, I feel like Last Ronin is like Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns. Like, it was done, it was amazing, and that's all you needed to do, right? But then, like, Frank Miller came out with, like, The Dark Knight Returns 2, like, years later, and it was absolutely garbage. And then we had The Master Race, which probably is, what, less than five or six years old now. But, like, The Last Ronin could have been just one of amazing storylines and just ended it at that whatever, four or five issues. You didn't need to do a continuation. Like, I just feel like now it's just, they must have, like, IDW must have went to, like, Eastman and been like, hey, do you want to make more money? Like, let's milk the shit out of the Ninja Turtles right now. Thoughts? Anyone? Well, I agree and I disagree. Mm -hmm. I feel like in the universe that they're in, they've kind of done everything they can do. And I feel it's it's a big repeat going over and over again. So I feel like them creating more turtles and, and going this different direction and building a new universe is good. And, and I do think this one is definitely slower. I think it's a bump in the road. 
but I think it's laying the groundwork for for an expansion on that end of the of the arc mm-hmm. or of the universe. Jeff, what do you think Hashtag about the loss? Out my turtles. Ooh. I thought I, I liked the I liked the the uh, last the last Ronin bit, and I thought it was good. It was well done. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I didn't read any of this, but I I don't know. I, I don't care. Like the reboot, it was like a soft reboot at the end, and it's mm-hmm. just like. And that's what, and that's where we're at. I mean, that's what basically yeah, the second like, story arc is now. Like these other turtles that were at the end of the last series are grown up, how and now old they're. Are they now? I mean, they're fast growing. Whatever. They're, they're teenage. It makes sense. <laughs> makes sense. I figured, like young adolescent Ninja Turtles. Yeah. You know, that could be. Could be. Preemies. They're preemie teenage turtles. Mutant ninja, yeah. The toddler mutant. Yeah. So that that's. I just don't think like. I just feel like this. It just ran its course too quick. Like that last Ronin run was great. Like yeah, it took forever to come out and finish, but like just the idea, like. It could have just been like an epic story, and then now they're already into the next one, and I don't feel connected. I don't feel as connected as I did with the last one, even though I'm not a huge Ninja Turtle fan anymore. Just reading the original one was like cool, and I feel like there's more times where I'm more invested, obviously, in the the flashbacks. But I feel like it just you could keep doing that over and over. Like you could literally just do all of what Michelangelo, you know, spoiler alert, has been doing this whole time since his the other turtles and everybody else is dead. Like, okay, that's great. I don't know. You just stop. I feel like Eastman should have just stopped. But that's here nor there. Um, it kind of like sparked a rejuvenation, though. Like it, it was yeah. so good that like then everybody was talking, and then so uh, they, I feel like it was like they were not gonna make you know. Like yeah. that was the first turtle book we talked about since Jenica. Like there has been yeah. like you can say what you want about like Venus and and some of those other ones, but um, Jenica. <laughs> Was the last one that was any any good before the last Ronin? But I feel and, like and it's that, a sleeper think, series too. Like I know Zach reads it, and nobody really ever big talks about it. But I know it's like it's probably it's it, it, not probably it is a very good read if you've actually read. I them. read like number one hundred through one hundred and twenty four or something like that, mm. and I just couldn't anymore. Yeah, it, it was just more of the same. And that's why I think they needed to do this. But I think what really killed the momentum was how they released those last Ronin number one through five or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it was just such a drag in between. And it was a surprise when it was on the newsstand. It was like, oh, that's that's finally out. It's here this yeah. week. Oh, it's, yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think because everybody I know, talk like I talked to about it said, you get to like number three and then you just wait till they all come out because you have to read it from front to back. Yeah. It takes a while. And that's, yeah, I mean, it would come out with like one, two, and then they would do a director's cut and the second and third printings and then they would go back to three and then two would come out with the director's cut. I don't know. I'm just tired of, just give me one through five. Like, how are you not done in like half a year like with these issues? It just, it's, it's very odd, especially when that's the only thing that he's writing, right? It's not like yeah. he's like James Tinian who's writing like four different comic books and can come out with four different universes in, in one month. Like, okay, like what's what's Kevin doing? Like just shows, conventions, signings? Like, I don't know. But anyway, um, that's my that's my hot garbage. Uh, pick of the week this week is the Dark Droid number one uh, for Star Wars, you know. Surprise, right? I go from my hating something to loving something, and it has to be Star Wars. But I thought Star Wars Dark Droids was actually really good. It's very horror-ish. There's a lot of killings, a lot of violent things that you really don't see in too much of like Star Wars lore. Like obviously, yeah, Jedi's kill things, but like the droids being like insane, um, and this growing fear. It's very AI. Um, even like uh, that movie like Virus or any of these movies that are like where robots take over, right? Like AI robot or any of that stuff. So the fact that like all the droids in the universe, there's a way that this one main one can like go in and manipulate them. It's very interesting. So I do like the dark droids and I know they're coming out with some mini series and there's all going to be all the crossovers between like Vader, Afra, the main series and bounty hunters as well. So um, look out for the rest of those as they've been popping up. So that's it for what are we currently reading? Um, I appreciate my panel members this evening. Of course, a lot of terrific con talk as well as other stuff. Um, let's go around the horn. Where can people find you, Mr. Jeff? You can find me on Instagram, Comic Dunes. You can find me on Whatnot, same thing, Comic Dunes. 
uh, pretty much same same name, same bad channel, right? Or same mm-hmm. so whatever you want to call it. But Main yeah, card it's comic ripper? tunes around the horn. All right, yeah, card ripping dirty, all weekend. Dirty card ripper, dirty card flip. Let's get something together on Sunday and we'll stream it. Let's go. I, I got a pack of Roger Rabbit. I got, dude, I got your cards here. We got to, I got to rip. I don't want to rip without you, bro. It's, I, I heard the host Malone has the bounty out for the pygmy hippo. Oh my God. 1.5. Yeah. I want it. I want to break the one ring. He, yeah. he paid 2 million. <laughs> I want 2.1 free paella. Yeah. <laughs> he got the Absolutely. wrong ring. He got the wrong ring. Well, and I, yeah. I, Post doesn't know I used to be an executive chef. Yeah. I bet your mind's better. We'll get him. We'll get him there. Instagram, we'll PSA. whatnot, Comic right. Dunes. Comic Dunes. Let's Make go. sure you follow him in all those hot places. And he'll be setting up at New York Comic Con this year as well. So, um, Greg, where can people find you? I uh, roll mostly on my Instagram at Rocksteady Collectibles. And then you can find me in the Newbieverse where nine times out of ten, I'm co-hosting alongside that guy and, and going on an adventure every week. Awesome. Um, and newbie shows are when? Usually with uh, every Tuesday at seven forty, uh, cool. my time. I guess that's Mountain Time. So, so like nine forty, nine forty-five, nine fifty. Yeah. When if he ever starts on time. So, um, yeah. So appreciate it. So uh, great talking with both of you. Thank you both for you know hopping on here and talking some terrific con talk. Uh, again, you know we were definitely going to be uh, upcoming shows for myself this upcoming weekend. Of course, whatnot. Make sure you're following me and I'm Prime, of course, on Instagram see when the latest shows are going to be for and also for whatnot uh the next big show um i talked about it maybe last week or the week before i will be doing probably going to botcon here in new jersey at the end of august so the transformers thing and then i will be at baltimore comic-con in september so look forward to that but that's it for season three episode 31 we will all catch you all later uh peace out <laughs>